Hello, I am Diego Liserazo, and you can check my blog here at geekego.com or my blog, my, well, this is my Twitter really, and my YouTube to just check my channels, my videos, my comments around game dev adventures and constructing in particular, but also uh, I think soon I'm going to be making more videos around other technology uh, aspects of, well, different things, and games in general. Um, Today I just wanted to make a really quick video about uh, the Construct2 UI, the user interface. And uh, why I really want to do this is because there are certain features that I think they are quite useful that perhaps you haven't noticed if it's your first time uh, working with Construct2. The first one is that uh, you have here this ribbon this is where you have most of your comments, but at the same time, sometimes you may not want this, you may want some more space here, so you just can collapse it, make it disappear, or just put it again here, so you don't, you don't really have to see it, and, and it's just going to disappear while you do this, so it, it, really, it really goes to whatever you want. The other thing uh, really has to do with this, and is with the uh, snap to grid and the, the grid in, in general. So sometimes it's really useful to have a grid that in this case is 32 by 32 and just to try to align things, just to figure out where you want to put things in your game, right? But even if you see it, it still, uh, you may still make a mistake, for example. Like what if I want to line it here and you can see that it's not perfect, right? So one of the options that you have is this one snap to grid that you find it here on the view menu. So then whenever you're moving things, it's going to try to snap to the, uh, the grid that is existing. In this case, it's taking the center of the image because that's the hotspot that we have and that's where uh, we're going to try to uh, adjust things and also when we're trying to change the, the, the size so you could try to do something like okay I don't want to do that I want to change the size in a different way and then I want to snap it when I, whenever I'm moving it you can see the same behavior when you have the uh, Pathfinder well the third the third defense template that comes with Constructor but it, this is quite useful the other thing, of course, is like how to zoom in or zoom out. If you have a mouse, and quite likely you do have some sort of like wheel, then quite likely you are going to be able to find that pressing control, the, the key control, and rolling that little wheel, central wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in or zoom out. If somehow you didn't know about that or just don't feel comfortable doing it or well, you don't have a mouse with wheel, you still can go here to view and just do zoom in or zoom out and you're going to have a similar effect just that obviously it's much faster doing it with the mouse but well, it's there um, mm, what else? this one well, almost every every menu that you have here you also can make it appear or disappear so, you see uh, so if at some point you make something disappear just go here to the view and then you're going to be able to to, to find it again uh, you see, uh, and there is one that sometimes I don't even remember if this is available in the free version. I have a paid version, a personal one, so I, I may not see it. But for example, let me unsnap it. Let's suppose that we have three objects that are one on top of the other, like this, and I don't want the red one to appear uh, behind, I want it to appear on top. If I could solve this using several layers that we have here, I'm putting then the red one on a top layer. But what if I just want the three objects on the same layer and still I want the red to be on top? Uh, usually this Z coordinate that we have here, that is the depth, uh, it really depends on the order of creation of the objects. That's So I created first the red, so it goes to the bottom, then I created the green, and then I created the chocolate one. So that's how it is. But what if I want to change it? So I could do this C var, and you can tell that uh, I have things here on, on this order, so like on, well, on the layer. So I just have to drag it up 
and now it appears on top you see so this is something that I'm not entirely certain if it's uh, enable on the free version if not well then you have a good option there to uh, well to pay this is quite useful and you also can change this uh, by code by events but obviously if you want to do something manual it's much simpler to do it here mm, also you can change the style of how construct 2 looks but I'm just going to leave it at that and then also it, this one could be useful depending on the game that you have is to show the uh, collision polygons so in this case uh, everything is a uh, square but what about if I change the collision polygon here to make it more like a weird triangle now you can see it here so now you are going to figure out why I don't know this uh, sprite is only going to collide when it touches over here and it has to do with the collision polygon so like I said depending on the game that you want to do this could be important the last part I am going to create just um, uh, let's say let's create a bogus uh, event so every take I'm just going to do an action uh, start whatever something like this uh, and I'm just going to copy it many times and then I'm going to create a different one so compared to values 0 is equal to 0 apparently it should and a sprite destroy so this is just to exemplify this last part on the events so well first you have most of the options that you that you need like to add a new event to add a variable and things like that but most of those things you also can do right clicking on your uh, well on your event sheet so like you see add event add a comment add a group so things like that so that's quite useful uh, but this one I'm quite certain that is only on the paid version that is to search and this one lets you search on your events so that's really useful so for example if I want to create something around like let's rename this one I'm going to call it red right it makes sense so if I want to search old events and I'm going to do something like this uh, set opacity to 0 to 56 so I have two events that have to do with red but let's suppose that I had a hundred events here so it's quite hard to keep track of the things that I have it there so I just could say red and it's going to filter the events to have something like that and then you clear the search and that's it so now what about if I want something that has to do with a sprite you see that there are many of course so still oh, sorry sprite and it still filters so that's that's quite useful you also have uh, breakpoints here uh, as far as I remember you cannot set breakpoints when you have like sub events or when you have like loops but still it's quite useful to debug your your program and that actually could be a perfect subject for uh, another video so well that's it um, so well the the other things that I'm just going to mention really quick uh, of course have to do with the layout the event sheet properties and objects but I think I've created the video around that so the only thing that I'm going to mention is like whenever you create an, a new object like a sprite and let's make it green whatever you are going to find it in several places the first one is here on the project you have everything all the objects and all the plugins and everything that is included it's here but also you have the objects right here so in this case I think it's this one yeah so you're going to have it here and you can create folders so out of subfolders so my sprites or whatever it is and you can move things there so if you want to have things really well organized you could create folders and then you put things here and then just go up and so it's easier for you to keep track of those and also whenever you touch whenever you select one of the objects here or here you're going to have the properties here on the left pane or whatever your properties pane is is located so in this case I see that this object in particular has a bullet behavior so we have it here so well there you go uh, and then the other two options that you have here the layout and the event sheet so the layout is basically almost like a level that's where you put all the graphic parts all the objects that you have uh, and then the logic is going to go here on the fence 
Uh, by default, you're going to have just one layout, one event, but you can create as many as you want. So I, I, lay, I lay out and you could share the same event sheet or you could, well, in this case, it's there. And a really cool trick is this, that is to duplicate. And, yeah. and then whenever you open that one, you have a copy of what we had here. You see? So well, uh, I just wanted to point to some of the things that may be a little hidden or that perhaps you were not paying that much attention when you were following tutorials. So it's it's really cool to have a little bit of a reminder and, and have it here uh, handy in, in a video. So well, that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said, it was going to be quite short. And again, here is my uh, personal blog my YouTube channel that is going to appear again over here in a second and just well let me use some comments and suggestions and I will try to accommodate and create videos about uh, cool subjects around gaming and technology in general thank you